in a visual metaphor, I'm trying to turn this into this. Ba, 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 ba. Tangle Chords is exactly why I'm making this video today because nothing in my life is organized and we need to reset, okay? Honestly, by watching this video, you are supporting your girl to get motivated to get her life in order and by extension, help you to get your lives in order. So together, we're resetting, grounding ourselves, getting our goals and things to align so that we feel like zen. Big news, oh my goodness, we just hit 10,000 subscribers. Yeah! I guess up until this point, I haven't taken this YouTube thing super seriously. It's always been like, oh yeah, I'll make a video because I love making videos and I can't not make videos because making videos is my passion. But now I'm like, wow, there's so many of you. I actually have to make stuff that is quality, like that actually helps you, that means something. It, it is truly an honor to have you guys watch anything I put out. But yeah, just wanted to start the video by thanking you guys for 10,000 subs. I have big plans. I have, always have big plans. But you know what my problem is? Life just gets in the way and I drop the ball and I just fall out of routine and life becomes chaotic. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but when my space is messy, when actually you can fully see like the clothesline in the background currently, it hasn't been packed up for like a whole week. But when my space is messy, and my husband will testify to this, when the house is messy, I am a grumpy girl. I'm a grumpy girl. So what I thought would be really great to do, considering it is July 1st, oh my goodness, where has the year gone? I thought it would be a great idea to do a mid-year reset, to organize our physical, spiritual, digital, emotional lives and get back on track with our goals and just honestly, just to get some semblance of normalcy and some semblance of organization back into our lives. Because if you're anything like me, the last couple of months have been crazy. You've been taking on too much work. You've been sleeping not so well. Your routine's been out of whack. You haven't been exercising as much as you should, etc., etc., etc. So without further ado, let's jump in to all the things that we're going to reset. But before we do, I just wanted to give a shout out to Natalie Banner. Natalie, if you're watching this, thank you so much for your beautiful email this week. It totally made my day. Natalie reached out to me and she's a singer songwriter and also a psychology student, I believe, according to her Spotify profile anyway. And she asked if I would be willing to play one of her songs as a backing track in my videos. And of course, I'm like, yes, of course I will. That would be an honor. She has a real way with words and through exploring like the human psyche in her music. And Natalie, I'm just so proud of you for putting your music out there. It's like not an easy thing to do. You're doing an amazing job and I just wanted to uplift you and let everyone know that if you want to listen to her music, it's Natalie Banner, B-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, on Spotify. Please check out her music. The song that I'm going to be playing in this video is called Not A Kid. So enjoy and let's jump into it. Okay, so first things first, before we start really anything in life, the first thing we have to do is make our bed. And I think this is just really good for, I don't know, just clearing your mind and getting rid of some of that mental clutter. I know for me, it just really like brings down my blood pressure a little bit and helps me to just start my day. Um, but what I really want to focus on with the physical space element of, you know, this mid-year reset isn't so much just like the day-to-day -day tasks of like vacuuming or ironing or whatever. I really want to focus on systems and which systems are particularly not working for me and how to improve them. And one of the areas I want to focus on is our under the bed storage, because as you can see, it's got a lot of potential. There's a lot of space here, but it's not well used really at all. So I'm going to just take everything out because as they say, things are going to get worse before they get better. And uh, yeah, we've actually got a vacuum cleaner and a broom that should be put under the bed, but they're currently in the little laundry nook, which is not a room like it. They're, they're really ugly and you can always see the vacuum cleaner. So I'd love to put them under here. But also because we have very high ceilings, we've got two ladders we sort of have to juggle and try and fit in. So that's all going to go under the bed. I'm going to give it a good vacuum. Also, if any of you guys are about to move out or maybe you're living in a small space and want to maximize your space, I highly recommend a gas lift bed. It's just so smart. We live in a 60 square meter little granny flat, so we don't have a lot of space and it's just been an absolute lifesaver. And they're not that much more expensive than normal beds, honestly. So 
yeah, that would be my recommendation. It's time to clear this and mess out. So another thing that's really, really good to do when you're organizing your physical space is to get rid of your clothes. And this is a message for girls particularly, we tend to hoard clothes. What is it about clothing that's just so attractive? <laughs> anyway, so here I am just taking out some of the shirts that I never wear or only wear for present presenting on camera at work. And I'm gonna take them to work so it just frees up some space in my wardrobe and also makes it a lot easier at work because I always need different changes of clothes there. Okay, so it feels amazing because I finally figured out what I want to donate and get rid of. This pile, that one on the end, I am taking to work to hang up in the closet there because those clothes I literally only use to film our weekly news bulletin. Um, these things here, I am taking to Vinnie's to donate slash maybe give to my sisters if they want it first. And then this bag is empty, but it's cute. So I'm gonna put it in my car for my groceries. But yes, feeling light and feeling organized and feeling just better overall, I think. Um, just to not have those things that I don't ever use cluttering up my space. Oh, okay, so. I decided to do this mid-year reset over a couple of days. As you can see, the sun is shining brightly. I decided to air out my linen and put it in the sun and just, oh, it was such a glorious day that day. Um, but I recommend doing it over a couple of days because it means that you don't have to leave a project half done. You can kind of get everything done in the one day. And also if the weather's bad, you know, you can air out your linen on the next day or whatever. And okay, granted, I know this video is coming out in early July, so I'm very sorry that I haven't given you warning, but hey, it's never too late to do a mid-year reset. It's never too late to do any kind of a reset. It's never too late to just randomly collapse on the bed either. Like there's always an opportunity for that too, to have a little break. We don't have to earn rest, guys. Rest is like a prerequisite to life. It's not a reward, just, re yeah. I'm very passionate about this topic. Rather than ranting here, maybe I'll make a separate video on it. Yep, good job, Melon, excellent. Another reason I recommend doing the mid-year reset over at least a full day is to work on some projects you've been putting off for a long time. For me, I had been putting off washing down our mirrors for literally about three months. When we first moved in, we didn't have a wardrobe for a long time and the mirrors weren't installed. So they were just sitting in storage. And so the styrofoam that they were packed in started to kind of melt onto the sides of the mirrors, like the rubber edges. And it's actually really, really hard to get off. So I knew it was gonna take me a couple of hours, but I'd just been putting it off forever. So anyway, I decided to do it. I got my tools. I scraped it all back with my nails, with the scrapey tool. Then I wiped down the mirrors with Windex and it just, oh my goodness, it just lifted the space so, so much. I also decided to wipe down some black marks off the walls and also wash some windows, which I don't have footage of. I don't know what it is about wiping down vertical surfaces, but for me, when there's marks on the wall and there's gunk on the windows and like marks on the mirrors, eventually I stop seeing it, but it doesn't stop making a psychological impact, if that makes sense. Like I won't notice the fact that the mirror is covered in toothpaste, but once I've wiped it off, it just oh, it lifts me so much. Like I feel so much happier. So I try and make a conscious effort every now and then to wipe down those surfaces. It's kind of like actually, <laughs> do you ever turn on the air conditioning and then like forget it's on, but you feel stressed and kind of irritable and then it's not until you turn it off that you realize that the humming loud noise in the background was the reason you were stressed. And so turning it off just like brings such relief. That to me is what wiping marks off surfaces is. I don't know if you resonate with that. Let me know if you do. I feel like I'm a bit crazy, but. Anyway, speaking of things you keep putting off but wanna do, I also decided to undertake a little special project which was redoing the bedside tables in our room. So when we bought these, we got them from Freedom Furniture and they were lovely. They are lovely, I, I really like them. They're very beach vibes and we live near the beach so it all works out. However, the one downside was that the paint on the top of them was really sort of, just wasn't very nice and it kept scraping whenever I'd like put my ring or you know put a pen down, it would like scratch the surface. So I was really unhappy about that. And then of course I accidentally spilled some nail polish remover on the top of it, which took off a bunch of the paint. So that wasn't gonna, that wasn't gonna fly. That wasn't gonna last. So I decided to repaint the top of them, but just be a little bit creative. And so I did some childlike drawings on top and oh, I just love them. But I decided to make a separate video about that. So feel free to check it out in the description below or in the little link on your screen. All right, all right, all right. So the next point of call is 
our digital space. I think this is just so important because, because most of us spend the majority of our time on our devices, whether that be for work or for pleasure, so they can very easily get clogged up with files or just physically dirty and it's important to keep them clean. So I'm just sitting down here and going through all the files on my computer that I haven't organized in months and months and months. And also choosing a new desktop screensaver because ta-da! Zhuzhes it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more fun. And then of course, we've all heard the statistic that a computer keyboard has more bacteria on it than a toilet seat. So, you know, spray a little bit of uh, antibacterial stuff on there, maybe some Windex like I did and just watch it shine. Oh, look at that shine. Now that you've given everything a good clean and organized your files, it's time to address the online space. And yes, I have a sticker in my hair in this. Don't at me in the comments. Way too deep into the cleaning to notice. But I'm kind of loving the vibe. Like maybe we should all put more stickers in our hair. Hey, that's a business idea for someone. Hair stickers, you're welcome. Anyway, we digress. So. There are multiple platforms that you should address when considering a bit of a digital clean out detox. I'm not gonna go into this one in great detail, but you and I both know that all of these platforms can get completely clogged up with unread messages, files, saved items, tabs. Yeah, so this is your sign to take a few hours and just, just do it. Just, you got this, okay? I believe in you. So just to illustrate, this here is how many things that get saved to my desktop per day on average. Sometimes it's a lot more than this, sometimes it's not quite as many, but like this is a decent amount. And that's in one day. And usually by the end of the day, I like, I don't have the patience or the, I'm just not bothered to like clear it. So what I'll do is I'll just get like a little folder and call it organized and I'll just dump everything in there at the end of the day if my desktop gets clogged. Is anyone else like that? Like that's, that's just how I roll. I just save everything to my desktop. It's, it's good to do a mid-year reset and like clear your desktop, but if that only lasts one day, like, yeah, it's good, but you're not really getting ahead. You're just kind of catching up and then you're gonna get behind straight away. So what I am planning to do is in my Notion, which is uh, here, hello, uh, on the right-hand column. And if you watch my Notion video, I do go into this with my like daily routines and habits and stuff. I try and keep it simple, but one of the things I really wanna put in there is actually just to clear up my digital space. Like every day, once a week, I'm still deciding something good is to set in place routines for when you organize this stuff. Like with my Notion and Google Calendar, I haven't been as organized recently. For many, many months, I was like doing it every single Sunday night. I'd sit down for like half an hour, organize everything, you know, clear up what needed to be cleared. And that worked really, really well for me. It's just that I've been so busy in the last couple of months, I just haven't had time to be organized, which is, you know, crazy, like fall off a cliff when you get too busy. Get to it guys, get to it and organize. Okay, lucky last, but definitely not least. In fact, in my opinion, the most important is the spiritual space. And I've used this category to encapsulate really a lot of sort of routine making and reflection, because in my opinion, spirituality is not some measure of outward performance. It's not some like, gotta tick off my devotions every day, or gotta tick off my spiritual disciplines every day. It is a process of becoming, learning about yourself and about God and about others. It's it's a space where you should have freedom to question, freedom to grow, because you are secure in your relationship with who you are and who God is. Now that is a lot of word fluff, <laughs> um, but to put that into practice is obviously not super simple because if it was, we'd all be living perfectly balanced and happy lives. Spirituality is not a thing that should be had or that we have to gain or that is some, as I said, measure of performance. Spirituality is a part of who we are. We are created, we were created spiritual beings by God because we have the ability to question and to reason and to think about our lives in the context of eternity and the purpose of them and all of these big questions, which I think is so beautiful. So rather than getting caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of life, having a spiritual practice really means taking that step back and looking at your life in context. So naturally when I start feeling overwhelmed or like I'm stagnating or like the game I'm playing just isn't working for me anymore, what I do is I journal. And journaling has always been a fairly big part of my life. I usually start by writing down just everything in my mind, all the things I'm struggling with, or maybe that I've experienced recently that I'm learning about myself. I do a big dump on the page. And then I split my life into six categories or six areas of life. The first is spiritual, 
then there's physical, social and relational, financial, career and hobbies. And what you want to do is rate each of those areas of your life out of 10. And then from that list, um, try and keep in mind that old proverb, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to know the things I can change and the wisdom to know the difference. Because ultimately there is a lot of dissatisfaction in my life and in your life I'm sure that you can't control. So the best point of call is to just be grateful and try and practice gratitude and perspective. But then there are other things in your life that can physically be changed, you should act upon. And so trying to differentiate the parts of your life where you're feeling unfulfilled because of perspective and the parts of your life where you're feeling unfulfilled because you're not acting on goals or dreams that you have is really important. And this is all part of um, my, I guess, quote unquote, spiritual practice, but yours can look totally different. What I mean by spirituality is really just taking a step back and analyzing your life from more of an external or bird's eye view perspective. That of course isn't to say that Bible study and prayer isn't important. They are central to all of this because they are the tools that give us wisdom to know what is and isn't important in our lives and to be able to make informed decisions and to be able to have a grounded sense of perspective. I'm not reading my Bible because it's the right thing to do. I'm reading my Bible because it gives me wisdom to know how to live my life better. I hope that makes sense. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned some tips or tricks to try and organize your life. I hope it motivated you to Take a few hours, take a day to just reorganize some of those systems in your life that aren't working for you and to get back in alignment with your spiritual life, your physical space, your emotional space and your digital space as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below about the videos you'd like me to make because it really helps me out with the algorithm and just supports my channel and supports me to make more videos. I love you all, God loves you infinitely, and may that truth carry you over to the next video next, and I will see you then. Bye-bye. You guys literally